On this episode of Ask Dr. Bitcoin, I'm going to share with you five questions Bitcoin veterans like me hear daily. Stay tuned. Well, hello there. I'm Mark Risen Hopkins, a cryptocurrency and blockchain enthusiast who's been studying and learning about the space since 2011. And today we're going to tell you how to ask the right questions about Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, ICOs, projects, all these things, because I love answering questions about cryptocurrency. I love talking about Bitcoin. Um, unfortunately, uh, since I've been, I've been this wild man out in the wilderness for the last six years and no one's been really paying much attention to Bitcoin in the mainstream. And now I've got six years worth of questions being compressed down into like the last two or three weeks. That's part of what the Dr. Bitcoin uh, episodes are all about, but it's also, I'm getting a lot of the same kind of rookie questions over and over again. So today, we're just gonna kind of go over some of these very basic questions. I'm gonna tell you what's wrong with these questions, and I'm gonna tell you what the right questions are you should be asking. Stay tuned. Probably the number one question that I get most frequently, at least these days, is are we in a bubble? Is Bitcoin in a bubble? Is cryptocurrency gonna pop? My answer to that always starts out with, I have no crystal ball. I'm not a technical analysis, market trader, day trader kind of guy. Uh, even if I were, there's no surefire indicator on a chart that says, okay, bubble here, there be dragons. Similarly, I'm not a macroeconomist. I can't tell you when, uh, when the housing bubble is gonna pop and I can't tell you when a cryptocurrency is going to pop or if we're in one. And if you look at macroeconomists looking at the, uh, the larger, uh, bubble trends like the dot-com bubble or the housing bubble or, or the, uh, the any of these other major scandals that had to have been bailed out, they weren't really great at predicting those either. So anytime you see somebody that's telling you that, that we're for sure in a bubble and it's going to pop at such and such date, you can pretty much discount those prognostications as pure speculation or perhaps the information from people who are just trying to spare, spread fear, uncertainty, and doubt about the market in general. Another question I get quite frequently is, when's the best time to buy? Simple answer on that one, 2009. That's when it was under a dollar and that was absolutely the best time to buy. Second best time, today. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, these are essentially deflationary currencies. That doesn't mean they're always gonna go up or they'll have no volatility, but that means given a long enough timeline and in the same prevailing market conditions, it's gonna tend to go upwards in value. That means if you take a long enough view, it's the best time to buy right now. A, a companion question to this is that I get all the time is when's the best time to sell? Did I mention I don't have a crystal ball? Neither does anybody else. In general, you're supposed to buy low and sell high. I take a slightly different approach. I think that cryptocurrency is inherently a better currency than anything issued by a government. It's commonly known as fiat currency. As a result, and we talked about this in previous episodes, I live in kind of a crypto first lifestyle. I don't think about it in terms of cashing out. I don't think about cryptocurrency as an investment. I think of it as a way to spend my money in a superior method than I would if I were just keeping it in a deflationary currency that's losing value over time. This is a question I'm getting probably like five or six times a day. It's decreasing in frequency a little bit just because the number of ICOs that are coming out is, is maybe slowing down a little bit, but I still get asked, so much. Have you heard of that underwater basket weaving coin or whatever the ICO of the week is? It's just, it's, it's too much. No, I haven't heard about it. In fact, you can ask five or six of your best crypto friends that have been in the business since 2009, and I guarantee you most of them probably haven't heard about it either. There is absolutely positively no way for any human being to keep up with all the news all the time. You just can't. Not if you're doing anything creative or anything productive with your time. There's just too many projects, too much stuff going on. And I'd be glad to investigate that for you, but that takes time. And I do have a consulting rate of 300 bucks an hour. You can click over here and find out more. Now that we've heard about this new underwater basket weaving coin, should I buy it, Mark? Again, brought this up a couple times, still don't have a crystal ball. I don't know how this thing is gonna go. I haven't researched it. I don't know anything about it. Probably you haven't either because you're asking me, we got to do research. We got to figure out what's going to happen here. And then we can make an informed decision about whether or not we want to buy it. So I'm going to go through these same questions we just talked about again, but I'm going to try to kind of read between the lines and try to interpret what it is you're really asking and probably the right way to ask these questions of yourselves and of your friends. So the first question, 
is this a bubble? What you're really trying to say is, hey, $20,000 is a lot of money for a single Bitcoin. It, it got here really quick. You know, is, is, this, is this gonna be a problem? What do, we, what do we know about this? The fact of the matter is that even the Chicago Mercantile Exchange Emeritus Leo Melamad just went on the record a couple of weeks ago saying that Bitcoin is perhaps the first truly new asset class in over 100 years. What does that mean? Bitcoin has elements of a currency, it has elements of a utility token, has elements of, of a security. The IRS and the SEC are at complete odds right now as to what they are defining it as legally because it doesn't fit the bill of anything else in, in, our, in the history of money. So to say that we're hitting a bubble or that we're not hitting a bubble is complete speculation because this doesn't look like anything from our past that we can say, oh, it's definitely like the housing crisis of 2008. Oh, it's definitely like the dot-com bubble. In fact, this is a theory that I like to think of. Yeah, it does have a logarithmic curve on the market, you know, the market uh, charts, but if you think about other things that that looks like, it actually has a striking resemblance to user adoption curves. And if you compare Bitcoin to something like Uber or Airbnb, yeah, we're hitting the knee of the curve here, but what are those things, what happens with those types of services? Facebook, MySpace, uh, Twitter, they all turn into S-curves. Because you eventually run out of people, you saturate the market. I personally think that's what's happening here with Bitcoin because it correlates very much with user adoption. Look at the user numbers on Coinbase, look at the transaction velocity on the blockchain. The most reliable leading indicator of Bitcoin's price is the Google Trends Index. If you do a search for Google, in Google Trends for Bitcoin, the popularity of the keyword, and you superimpose that over a, a chart of uh, Bitcoin's price for the last four or five years for the same time frame, you're gonna see that the Google trend actually leads by a couple of days, which indicates that it's user interest and adoption that's driving the price, not some sort of manufactured thing. This is real user adoption, and I think maybe that's the best way to look at it. When's the best time to buy? This is another frequently asked question. And what you're really asking here is how do I put money into this volatile market and mitigate my risk? Because we know Bitcoin goes up, Bitcoin goes down. It can fluctuate thousands of dollars in a single day. Yes, there's a lot of money to be made here, but you know, how do I mitigate my risk? One of the first and most popular Ask Dr. Bitcoins we did is one I did with uh, my friend David Salmon from Primerica who explained the concept of dollar cost averaging. You can click on it here if you want to learn more about it. It's a long video, but essentially it's a tried and true uh, investment strategy for people that want to be principled about their money and maximize their earnings without having to think about and day trade on volatile assets. So that leads us to the next question. When's the best time to sell? I can't give you the answer to that. Um, but what I can tell you, and I touched on it before, living crypto first. This is the way I think about my money. I don't think about cryptocurrency as an investment. I think of it as a native currency. And that doesn't necessarily mean I think Bitcoin is better than Litecoin or Dash is better than Ethereum. Everything, there's different horses for different courses. And I think that you, know, you have to learn what these things are for and where to use them. But in general, I think all of them are inherently superior to the US dollar because they hold their value better than the US dollar. And with the plethora of tools that are made, able to allow you to spend that money in day-to-day -day life and have instant liquidity while you hold your Bitcoin, why would you bother thinking about how much money it's worth? Just think about how much purchasing power it gives you. So to the topic of ICOs, projects, and new coins, you know, tell me about that underwater basket weaving coin, Mark. Well, what you're really wanting to know is, have you heard of it? And you want to use my conception, my, my perception of that coin as a proxy for learning about it for yourself, which is fine, right? Find people that know more than you and you trust their opinion and run off of there. But what's almost just as easy, if you're spending that much time finding unheard of coins to see if they're good investment vehicles, is to spend the time to learn how to evaluate it for yourself, at least at a cursory level. I try to break down the, the value of a coin into four separate categories. Number one, who's on the team? Do I recognize their names? Do they have a good profile on LinkedIn and, and other places where I can see what their history of work is and how, how well they're respected by their peers? What is their product market fit? Are they trying to solve world hunger? Are they trying to small, solve a small niche? And Am I investing it on this on an ideological level because I think this needs to be done in the world or am I investing in this because it's a pro profit maker? You know, these are all concepts and 
questions that real investors ask themselves about real projects, and you should be doing the same thing as well. Another area that I look at is what is their competition? Are they the fifth entrant to the market in the, in the ICO space trying to do the same thing, or are they the first ones? That matters. And not always is the first person the best person, right? Sometimes it's the second person or the third person that gets it right, but it's also a more of an uphill battle since they may have less market share. They're competing against an entrenched player. Finally, look at the economics of the coin. This is something that's a little bit different than what traditional investors have to ask themselves, but not too much. Like whenever you talk about a venture capitalist or someone that's investing in an IPO, they look at see how much stock is available and how much demand there is on that stock. You're gonna have to do the same thing. Not all ICOs and coins are created equally. Ripple, when they launched, had billions and billions of coins that are available for purchase. Bitcoin has 21 million. There is a vast difference between those two numbers and what the maximum potential value of those two coins could be, just purely on the numbers of coins that are available. So you gotta look at all these factors and determine whether that's right for you, which is our last question, should I buy it? Now that you understand how to evaluate it, don't ask me, ask yourself, because only you know your economic situation and how much money you're willing to risk on investments. I don't know any of these factors. I can only tell you what I think of the underlying technology and their potential for success. Well, there you have it, your blockchain and cryptocurrency prescription. As always, these are just my thoughts and I encourage you to seek out a second opinion. Subscribe for more videos on blockchain and cryptocurrency and if you enjoyed today's video, share it with a friend so they can see. Thanks for watching and don't forget to see the receptionist on your way out. Don't ask me. So another question I get is, what's the best? <laughs> yeah, don't ask me. Fuck off. End of story. Yeah.